welcome back to the great outdoors y'all today we are truck camping by the lake and of course bringing along the fishing rods but in today's video i'm doing something i've never done before while truck camping since my new chevy doesn't have a truck cap on it we are sleeping in the open air and i'll show you some of my hacks to keep comfortable while sleeping under the stars and on the fishing side of things, we're fishing some of the clearest water that I've seen all season. And there are some giants lurking around. But before we hit the lake, I gotta tell you about the massive sale going on at GuggenSquad.com, link down below. It's happening, fishing freaks. This is the biggest sale of the year at GuggenSquad.com. So if you've been holding back, now is the time to rip into these savings because it ain't gonna get better than this. Here's what you need to know. It's up to 75% off site-wide. Use my promo code LFG at checkout. But here's the categories. It's 30 to 70% off baits, apparel, terminal, and storage. 20% off rods and reels. And for every 25 bucks you spend, you get an entry to win the Trick 10 Guggen Squad aluminum boat. The sale starts now, goes to the 28th. I don't want you guys to miss out on this. So go to GuggenSquad.com and don't forget, use my promo code LFG at checkout. Looks like my ride just showed up here and we are gonna be doing some post frontal bass fishing today, y'all. Flags are ripping, trees are bending. <laughs> Literally <laughs> in the dirt. You're on, dude. Oh, I know. It's so great. Took you two minutes. I watched it eat. It was like, I didn't even feel it. I just watched it go up and suck it down. There's a good one. Look at that one. Holy Toledo. That's, that a, is a, that's a 10. That's a giant. That's a 10, dude. That's a giant. That is an absolute monster. Yep. That's a monster. <laughs> That's a monster, bro. Buddy. That's a monster. Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, that's a monster. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's either a high nine or a ten. And it's sticking. It's stucking. It's stucking. I don't know what it's doing, but. I don't know. But it's, it's, it's just it's, staring it's, at my dick. Oh, oh. Didn't even move. Holy moly, what's dude. What's going on here? All right. Let's, what's uh, what's going on let's here? group up. What are we Let's, looking around here? What's going on? I'm gonna get my big, my big sunfish wake bait. Don't you hook them on that little fairy wand? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Right between those reeds. See that spot back in there? I think I think that could be. I think. So. Whoa! He just depos. She just what? deposited some eggs or what? sperm what right there. Right in there. What is? That's that's that's. Are we watching that? We're watching the spawn. That? That's the spawn. That's a bed. It's a sand. Is yeah. That is... Either that or it's dying from golden algae. <laughs> <laughs> I found... Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy bit it. We got our first bite out of Jimmy. All right. Here we go. Here we go, folks. This is breaking breaking down the beds. I think, I think me and you are might about to get it going. I've got this one finally <laughs> after like 20 minutes. Dude, this is... I'm terrible. Look at this. Has it's it been like, 20 minutes? I don't know. Jimmy just jabbed it with oh. his nose. He just nose jabbed it. You, yours, is, yours is Jimmy. What's, what's your name this one? It's got to be a boy name. It's a boy, that's true. Um, Henry. Henry. I like yeah, that Henry's name. Henry and Jimmy. I think, Henry and Jimmy. I think I'm going to take a bet. Um, Jimmy is like 14 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's not even breaking 15. Oh, Jimmy just licked it for the first time. See, I found his little dark spot. Oh, here he goes. Oh, Jimmy got it. We got Jimmy. <laughs> okay, Jimmy might be over 14. Oh, mine just picked it up and split it. Come here, Jimmy. All right, y'all. This is this is my first bass of the day. A beautiful betting bass on a jig. Oh, love to see it. Now we're gonna get to see how big Jimmy is. Let's go back here to the measuring. 
situation now. I said 14. Jimmy might be 15. Jimmy could be 15. You're kind of long. Jimmy is 15 and a half. He's just long. He's a long guy. Hey, if you we can get you on the and get your first fish log. Ah, <sighs> my first fish log for the tournament. Yeah. I'm not logging a 15. <laughs> no way. That's so cool. All right, first fish of the day. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a carp. I was about to say that's a magnum. Look at this bass chasing off a carp. You got him. Finally. You got him. Oh, oh he come off. Henry, Henry was a solid 17. <laughs> yeah, folks, we bought, we be bopping around with Longer's TV today. We both got our first fish in the boat. A lot of male fish up there, but we have seen a giant. Seen a giant already. Yeah, look, is it? It's a fish feeding. It is. It's something. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. What is going on here? Oh, that is. No, you sure? Is, is it a. Is it a bass? No, dude, that is like a 40 pound fish. Oh, okay. What is that? Is that a giant carp? It is. It's, it's a, a giant, giant. Mega carp. Huh? Giant, dude. I've never seen one that big. Yeah, that's it's kicking up a dust cloud. That is crazy. Wow. That thing's so big, I could eat my swim bait. Oh, I see one up in there. A little misty cricket. Like a pale, they look kind of like a pale blue rock. Like I'm pretty sure there's one in there. You just see like a little pale blue. Oh, we're too close. Look at him. Bobby is out of the bed. No, he's coming back now. He's coming back. Bobby's coming back. I've named him Bobby. Big lip, big lip Bobby. He's on it, dude. Look at him. He's just flashed on it. Oh, Bobby. Big lip Bobby. These big ones ought to be behind us. Those little stumps. Bobby's got it. Oh, but how does Bobby drop a four inch log? He's coming back for it. Look at him. Bobby's on it hard. <laughs> this is awesome. Man, he is really pissed. Bobby's pissed. All right. Here we go. Big lip Bobby coming back in. We're going to give him that little just shake of the wacky. Excellent little clear water. Clear water bait. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. All right. Second fish of the day. Oh, Bobby just chased off a carp, dude. That was crazy. He's super aggressive. Following it down. Bobby got it. We got Bobby. Come here, Bobby. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, he's pretty much right on track. I think this fish is 16 and a half. Is that what I said, 16 and a half? Something like that. Oh, we'll do the full land. Full layout for Bobby. That's a nice fish, man. That's a really nice fish. A little four inch lunker log. Perfect little clear water suction. Let's check this out. All right, let's see what Bobby's at. Big lip Bobby. All right, I was wrong. Big lip, big, li big lip Bobby is uh, 16 on the dot. Awesome fish though, really fun. That fish behaved so nicely, like what you would expect. Oh my gosh, man, I wasn't even looking at these stumps out here. This no, is where no, she I, shot. I I'm sorry. This is where she ought to be. Guys, we have Mr. Lock on himself. Look, he's just chilling. I mean, wow. Going back in these little cuts and these bass are just, they're in the sticks. Look at this guy. Uh. That guy would eat a, eat a peanut if it fell out of a tree right now. Uh, yeah, he would. I don't even, <laughs> look, peanut. No, oh, I take that back. <laughs> so what we're encountering is we're seeing a lot of sight fish, but man, that's about the only way you can catch them. It's not uncommon this time of year. You get a, you get a big push, big wave, and, and fish are so fired up, and then you, 
you just have days where you see them up there, but they're real skittish. You got to spend a lot of time on the beds. We're just not seeing any big ones that are worth spending a lot of time on. But fishing around the banks where you think they would be like going in, just hanging, they're, they're not. We're not getting bit that way. It seems like sight fishing is the only way we can get bit. Luckily, we've got calming winds, very clear water, so we do have some opportunities, but it's a sight fishing kind of day. Speaking of sight fishing, got a good one. This one's really locked on, dude. Oh my God. This one, this one hasn't moved at all. <laughs> yeah. He is super locked on. I think he's taking the, the deep nap. Looks like a giant bass right this there. This is a gem. You see it? That's a giant fish. Look at that. That's a bass. That's yeah, a bass. That is a bass. That's yeah. A bass. Oh, did you see that? That's look at it's oh that's your bait yeah that's my bait oh my god yeah, okay look at that, thing. that is a giant fish oh yeah oh that's a big one look at that. that's a that's a bass that's a big one you can see the you see the pale green it's like in a it. greenish tint yeah yeah this one slid off too Timmy got it. Man, just some good healthy ones in here. Oh, that's not a bad fish. Nice one. Another victim of the jig. This fish is all over my jig. Just took it. Oh, took my trailer. Right. Man, this is the deepest bed that I've fished all year. Situation that me and Rob are encountering here today is we've got a lot of males pushing up. The females seem really tricky to catch. Like they're just hovering. They're not really coming to the beds. Could be in the next day or two. But we've been looking for a good deep better in this clear water all day. This is it's a pretty decent one right here. There we go. Oh. Mm. Full suction. They grabbed it. This little chunky male. Man, see you, buddy. Something special is happening right now, folks. We're in the afternoon, and we've seen our first female move up onto a bed. This is a bed that we were at this morning, saw a male, no female around. Now she's coming in. We've seen this all morning where female, like huge fish, eight plus pounds fish, are just on the outskirts, and they're cruising around. I would show you guys with the camera, but it's too, it's too money. But we're seeing males, way more fish come in here and starting to get set up. This is one of those things where if you see a spot like this, a shallow spot, and it's kind of not good in the morning, but you see fish that kind of want to be in there, they could be on beds that afternoon. They don't want to eat a wacky rig, unfortunately. We have flicked around wacky rigs till we're blue in the face. We could literally see... We can see dozens of fish start coming into this cut, into this backwater, and, and start setting up. Not a single bit phased. Actually, I don't even see Oh, dude. This guy's about to eat my chick. He's on something right here. He got it. What the heck? I don't even know what he was on. He was like on a stick. That was that was one of those we kept seeing circle. He, d he just decided to plop down on a stick all of a sudden, and he went nose down on it. That's crazy. 
What a healthy fish, man. Hey, buddy. Pretty cool fish. The afternoon report. Rob ended up catching a good fish off the of bed. We finally found a big female that had come in and wanted to play ball. But we're going out again tomorrow. We're camping here. This is camp. So we got the we got the big rig here. I've got the sleeping pad in the back. And we're about to cook up the catfish that I caught the other day. So you've hopefully you've already watched that video. But we're gonna get a little fire going. And this is my favorite, my favorite little buddy of all time for fires. I need to go on another bush crafting quest to get some more because I'm almost out. But this right here, I wish you could smell it. It's really dark. I wish you could smell it because this smells like the forest of Colorado. This is a dead, this came off a dead tree, a dead pine tree, and all the sap had dripped to the bottom and I picked it up and uh, the dried resin is in here and it just creates fires. I mean, it is the best. It's the best natural fire stuff. And I've got, I've got some ash from the house. Fun fact, white ash is what they make baseball bats out of. And then we got some oak as well. So we're gonna have a fire going. We're gonna do a little cooking. All right, you guys see how that's lit? All the oils in that are just going to flame out and that's gonna keep my, my fire going here because my wood's wet. That's gonna get us popping. Probably only need one piece because that stuff is just so good. A little TP here around it. Should get us going. to rise again and boy do we have a nice rise this morning literally looking at the sunrise this is my first night sleeping just in the bare truck bed so we got our our new chevy here without the truck cap all right i was a little worried slept like a baby perfect camping weather right around 49 50 degrees i really want to encourage everybody to to go camp and if you're going fishing, do camping while you're fishing because it's just so much better. And I'll give you three big reasons why I love to do it. So number one, well, it's economical. It, you're spending way less money than you would at a hotel or a Airbnb or something like that. Number two, <clears throat> it's efficient. So if you're able to camp where you're fishing, I mean, look at me right here. I'm right by the ramp. That's not always the case, but it's it's super efficient. And three, I suppose, is just the freedom. So when you camp, when you fish, your ability to go to any lake, basically any lake, is there. You're not restricted by, well, there's nowhere to stay out here. You can adventure where you want. And usually there's a camping a place where you can truck camp, truck camp around there. It makes it so awesome. All right, we got some coffee heating up right here. I'm gonna show you guys the biggest hack of all here in a second. We got some coffee heating up that we've gotta to attend to. Turn that down a little bit, which is a little hot. The key to getting a good espresso in the outdoors, you wanna heat your water first, get it not to boiling, but just hot. Then you put in your beans then you put your lid on 
That way you're not burning your beans. You're not getting any burned bean flavor. I'm just full of tips today. Let me show you the biggest hack of all. My gosh. Because what I was getting at with, with truck camping, I'm encouraging you guys to do it. But the biggest drawback is sleeping. So I think that's what holds a lot of us back from, from going camping or truck camping or whatever. Is just the sleeping aspect. You don't get as good a sleep. And after days of doing it, you're just tired. And you're like, oh, I can't wait to go home to my own bed. But if you can figure out how can you sleep well in the outdoors, then you're opening up more doors. See, see how that's going? So let me show you guys something that I have recently come upon. I feel like I have got the situation dialed. What's not dialed right now is I got water coming out of my coffee deal. We've, we've broken a seal on this puppy. Might have to get a new ring for my Bialetti. It's working. It's working now. It's coming out, but uh, got some down at the bottom. That's never happened to me before. We gotta, we gotta just let this happen though. Before I move on to this, the sleeping tip that you guys are gonna wanna hear. Look at that beautiful bean footage. So this is my sleep setup, y'all. Let's start with the pillow. That's a Tempur-Pedic pillow, which I love. Didn't love it at first, now I have to have it. That helps me sleep on my side, on my back, doesn't matter. I can sleep either way in the outdoors with the four inch pad. So there's a four inch pad in this canvas cutter. You don't have to get a canvas cutter, but that is a four inch foam pad in there that I have put a fleece blanket on top of so this is really what i call truck camping weather you know 40s basically 30 to 60 degrees at night when it starts getting above that you can get a little hot but i like that fleece blanket under there because if it gets a little too hot sometimes i'll just go with the with the blanket but let me tell you when it's a little colder this new sleeping bag i I've slept in it for a week now. I've got about seven days logged in it. Had another trip where I, I slept in this thing and I was hot at first. It was uncomfortable. I was like, I don't like this. But then I unzipped it and this sleeping bag right here has been, th this is the best sleeping bag I have ever had. And I've got some other zero degrees. I've got some really light ones for backpack camping, you know, hunting type gear, really light stuff. This one's sort of a medium weight, it's a zero degree, and it is the warmest thing I've ever had. This is a this is a North Face. This is part of the Mountain Dew outdoor gear. Um, they gave us these, because Guggen's partnered with Mountain Dew, and I was like, oh, I really don't have any North Face stuff. You know, I've heard it's pretty good. This, this is amazing. So this one is called the Trail Light, zero degree cool thing about it is you can unzip it about three quarters of the way so what I do is I tuck my feet in there it's getting a little hot out here so what I do is I tuck my feet into this end right here I leave this part open like a big flap and just drape it over me like a comforter and having your feet in there keeps the sleeping bag from you know binding up and that's one of my biggest problems with sleeping bags is you start rolling around in there. I like to move a lot at night, and then they get just get like, you just feel like you're wrapped up, and it's not comfortable. This thing, I can roll around, and the whole top is open, and it's just draped over me. It creates this perfect warm air insulator. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's the best sleeping bag I've ever had, and I have slept like a baby in that system, guys. Now, there was some dew last night, uh, no pun intended, but there's like water on my sleeping bag from all of the uh, the moisture that was in the air. Didn't have a truck cap. Um, there was also no bugs, so it was perfect to sleep outside. So if that is something that is holding you back from going camping, try a good pad, little fleece on it, get your pillow from home, your pillow that you like, and a, and a, a good sleeping bag that you're comfortable with. Figure out your system that works for you. Stay in the outdoors. It's just good for the soul. Woke up with the sunrise and the birds chirping. Kidding me? Uh, something really interesting just happened. 
Well, a couple interesting things. I, uh, I forgot my toothbrush, which is pretty unfortunate. I've done this once before. I just kind of frayed the end of a mesquite stick. You'd be surprised how well it actually works. My teeth feel amazing right now. I'm just not sure I took some fresh mesquite. You know, mesquite thorns are poisonous. Not really, not really sure if you're supposed to chew on like fresh green mesquite. Let me know down in the comments. The other thing interesting that happened <coughs> is I saw Rob walking away from my, my truck and it appeared that he had just put a toilet in the back of my truck. For what reason, I don't know. We're about to find out. <clears throat> Robert. I'd like a valid explanation why there was a porcelain toilet. It's not porcelain, it's, it's plastic. It's not porcelain? No, it's not porcelain, it's plastic. Okay, there's a, why it was a plastic toilet being <laughs> carried to my truck? So, I... I tested it out, okay? Wait, is this the, this is the toilet out of your camper? Yeah. And it wasn't installed, it's just kind of in there? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it doesn't, it's tankless. It's got a little thing and it spins. I was testing it out, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you do not wanna leave human feces inside of the toilet for long periods of time. <laughs> now, <laughs> I had thought okay. that, well, it's, it's vacuum sealed in here, but okay. I didn't put uh, two and two together that there's a solvent type deal that you put in with it that breaks it down. Well, it continues to break it down and breaks it down until it's and, it, it's it's exposed. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it broke it down, man. Oh. Okay. All right. So what is the time frame where you gotta? I know. I just because I took it out because it's not inside the toilet. So I took the entire bag out and I'm just airing out the toilet. I want to make sure okay. that the toilet because you know you always say sun it will kill all microbiome something. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So you're using science. I'm using I, I'm using science, baby. <laughs> He's using science to eliminate the smells. Well, that was it. I was just interesting to watch from afar. I was like, I think that's a, I think an actual toilet. It was, yeah. He's somehow carrying it. It looked like a porcelain toilet, toilet you're carrying like across it. the parking lot. It was amazing. It was an amazing scene. Anyway, uh, we're out here on the water now and our goal is to try to catch some fish. So we're gonna try to do that. It's gonna happen. We're gonna move back in here and there's gonna be a big old fat female, like that one that was stuck in back here. The only problem is it's going to be so hard to see him. What in God's green earth do I have to do? Get a hook in you. Throw a tiny, tiny, tiny thing. I got you, buddy. I got you, buddy. You finally got caught. Yee! You ever seen such a long, small fish? Look how long he is, dude. Look at that, he's peeing. All right, see you, buddy. It's kind of windy. The boy over here, is, he's hitting soprano. We're out here singing songs because uh, he's fishing his... I've got a fish on a bed, I'm gonna catch him for He's got one on a bed. I've, I've seen this many, many times, guys, with fishing where there's a there's a a pre-spawn thing that happens where they eat, and then there's a spawning thing that happens where they don't eat. Like there's days you can go out and flick a weightless bait around while you're looking for beds, and you're catching them while you're, you know, just casting out into deeper water or whatever. I'm going to catch one here. This in is a literally can hardly get a bite if we are not bed fishing. It's not just us two. We've talked to other oh, buddies. Oh God! He took my water. Yeah, he's gonna eat right now. He's gonna eat. He's on a bed. That's the only way. It's the only way. But thank you guys for tuning in to today's camping fishing experience. Hope you learned a little something on camping. Uh, sight fishing, it is what it is. We're gonna try to catch them any way we can. This is the only way we can right now. And stay tuned for the next video because I think we're gonna be searching out some crop peasies. So I'm gonna keep my peepers on, keep looking in this water for some big bass. And y'all stay tuned for another outdoor video coming up soon. I wish you well. I wish you tight lines. Give them a sniff for me, and I'll see you on the next one.